Welcome, everyone, to episode 59 of the Looks Like a Movie podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm here with Doug. We do not have Owen this week, but we're talking about two new movies, Immaculate and Roadhouse. And we're also going to do a bit of a discussion about AI being incorporated in film because of a third new movie, Late Night with the Devil. Um, but first, as always, we're going to talk about what we watched this past week. Doug, what have you been watching? Um. Really, I have not been watching a lot. I'm kind of in my washed era. You know, I'm kind of like... Uh, also, if you're going to tune out because Owen's not in this episode, fuck you. <laughs> this episode's going to be better because he's not here. Um, do people do like, that, you think? Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would talk a lot. You know um, what we were we were talking? We were talking when me and... Uh, you know, a little bit of background info for podcast listeners. When me and Owen hung out uh, these past couple of days, uh, apparently... Uh, people complain that Owen doesn't talk enough, which mm -hmm. is interesting because I feel like he talks quite a lot. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I feel like we all no, but you know what I mean. I'm like I feel like we all get our time on the podcast, but say uh, but apparently a lot of people's reaction is that uh, Owen stays a little quiet. I think Owen just doesn't talk about things he doesn't care about, which happens to be like half of the stuff we talk about on the podcast. That is the issue. Yeah, I, I will like. So looking at the data, which is like downloading right. the episode and then looking at all of our individual waves, right? Yeah. There are some episodes where Owen is silent for like like yeah. 10 minutes at a time. <laughs> yeah, but that's just like a oh. natural reaction to us talking about some of the stuff we talk about. He, uh, gets, his, yeah. he gets his moments. Anyway, what yeah, are you he talks when he wants to talk. It is, it is what it is. He can, he has say in what we talk about in the episodes too. So it's also yeah. his problem. Um, <laughs> uh, I, um, yeah, I'm not watching enough movies, but it, it's it, whatever. I'm doing other stuff. Um, it's The Matrix. I watched The Matrix in theaters. You also did this, correct? I did. Yes. Um, tw 25th anniversary. It's the greatest movie yeah. ever made. I, um, I worth bringing up. Greatest, greatest movie release weekend that has ever weekended that the the things i would do to to live like it, like the age i'm at now during that weekend when my favorite movie of all time came out the same weekend as the matrix for the listener that is 10 things i hate about you both coming out the same day what a weekend what a weekend! very crazy history. 1999 is kind of that year also what a year yeah like it's i kind think of that's probably the go year people, yeah I, I don't know if it's 99 96 but 70 something a really good one yeah. 94 is another one anyway continue um i rewatched deep water um the oh. adrian line film starring um ben affleck and under the armas uh the score go up it's say the same okay i don't i don't know what you have it rated but so it's a th seven out of ten movie for me. Okay. I think that movie that movie's fun. It's good. Um, I never heard you use uh, a ten scale before. <laughs> um, Are you shifting to IMDb as your platform? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm jumping ship to IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the holdovers. You, you know about this movie? I, I just I'm saw aware. it on Peacock. Yeah. Oh, um, you finally watched it? Okay, you didn't yeah. like it, did you? It's okay. I gave okay. it three and a half stars. Oh, um, okay. That's that's fine. It, it's fine. Um, yeah, I thought it might be lower, but that's acceptable. I, I, it's fine. Whatever, dude. I, I don't know. It's <laughs> I watched the uh, the so the so yeah, like the 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 Wes Anderson um road uh road doll shorts um were like edited into one, one um continuous thing, right? Yeah, one continuous like anthology film, and I watched that uh and. It was good. It feels weird marking it watched on Letterbox because it's like, oh, I've seen this entire thing before, but now this is a first watch for this other movie, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's and your, cool. And your favorite is still Poison. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's how it ends is with Poison. Uh, it's it's really good. Um, one of the best endings in any movie ever, probably. Right. <laughs> But yeah, so are we counting this as a 2024 release? Because this is the best movie of the year if we are. Uh, the short? <laughs> oh, because they've been re-edited into one yeah. thing. I, I'm going to I'm gonna argue against it. But if you want to, I mean, listen, these lists are, are meaningless anyway. You can make yeah, them these lists you matter. want. So, um, so if you want to put that at the top of yours, no, you know, uh, that's for other people to complain. 
Uh, so, uh, what are you up to? What did you do this week, Kevin? Uh, what did I watch? Okay. Um, not a lot because it's been a bit of a busy week. However, the, the quality of what I've been watching quite, quite high. Um, rewatched Magic Mike 2, one of the all time favorites. Uh, I kind of realized while rewatching it though, and I don't know what. I don't know if people are going to be let down by this because I'm quite the vocal advocate for this movie. I adore it. It's like my currently like my fifth favorite movie ever or something. A lot of uh, the reason why I rewatched it is because I was like, maybe I'll change up my my letterbox top four. Finally, I was like, maybe maybe there's t- it's time for a new movie to get put in. And, you know, as much as I love it, I don't know that it could ever break that barrier. I don't know that it'll ever be my favorite movie. Um like my very favorite movie because there's just something like missing. Uh, it's still perfect, but regardless, one of the best. Um, then I watched a woman under the influence, my first ever Cassavetes. Mm-hmm. I very much understand why people talk about him the way that they do. There's something very clear that you get out of just watching one of his movies. Like just from watching one movie, you kind of understand something about how he makes movies entirely, even though I've only seen this one. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's interesting, a lot of like, you know, there was like this conversation recently about all the, you know, people complaining about the the letterbox interviews with people with actors giving their top four. And like all these actors all the time are like, oh, well, I got to put a Cassavetes in there. And like, so he's widely kind of regarded as like uh, this, this director who's beloved amongst actors because he makes you know quote unquote actor movies Mm -hmm. um but when you watch the movie as great as the performances are some of the greatest performances i've seen they're not so much like actor movies as they are like this is one of the best directors ever just getting a brilliant performance (laughs) out of an act like it's like it's so obvious like how every single like aspect of the movie is dictated by him and the performances are exactly the way that he wants them to be that i mean i don't know how many of the actors are viewing it this way who like love his movies but that that was my understanding from watching it i was like this guy has complete control uh over everything that's going on here and it's beautiful to watch um but he um I, but it's also notable that he himself is an actor um, oh sure yeah 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 like as sure. much of an actor as he is a director yeah um and i'm not saying you know like yeah, yeah. Like I said, but it's just uh it's very <laughs> impressive how how good he is at making movies. <laughs> yeah, you're the first person I, to say this actually, I think. Yeah, yeah. Casafetti is a good filmmaker. I watched The Passion of Joan of Arc. Which speaking one? Of, speaking of good acting, the 1928 the, one. Okay. Um uh, yeah, like uh it's I don't I don't know if I could say something original about it really. Um it's been <laughs> almost a hundred years now. Um yeah. It's uh, really fucking good. Um, it's like, been, just, uh, I, I've needed to watch that for a while. Um, I know just like the great, the, the, the great performance ever. Just, just like the one um, amongst like all the other things that are also, uh, you know, essentially perfect. Um, yeah, I rewatched The Matrix for the first time in like 10 years, as you mentioned. Wow. Um, it's been a very Wait, long time. You haven't I seen also, any of the sequels, right? I also famously have not seen any of the sequels. But after rewatching this in theaters, I was like, it's time. We'll do it soon. Like it's we're time. we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it done. There's uh, like, oh my gosh. Also, Kevin, I think that it would destroy our friendship if you don't like the Matrix Reloaded. No, I don't. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, the, I think the chances of me disliking any of the sequels are pretty low. Um, okay. They all seem interesting to me. They all look pretty good to me. I don't. I don't think I would dislike any of them. Um, I did. I did love the Matrix. I mean, it was like watching it for the first time over again because that's how long it's been since I've seen it. Um, and then as I'm watching it, I'm just like kind of watching these scenes that I haven't seen since I was a kid. And like, it's all coming back to me. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking awesome. And I can't believe there was like a conversation on Twitter about it this past week of people being like, this movie has not aged well or whatever. And like, people don't care about the Matrix anymore. And I'm watching it in this theater and I'm like, man, yeah. <laughs> um, this movie has aged very well, actually. Yeah, it's, the movie's um, very good. And it's still perfect. <laughs> it's um, it's an age well i mean it's aged yeah, like oh my god it's aged so gracefully it's so crazy people are um, so crazy and then i just finished right before we started this recording 
uh, the Quiet on Set documentary series that's on HBO about Nickelodeon, which like everybody has been watching this past week. Um, it's, What's that about? It's a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't. Yeah, you know, people people know what it's about. But um, I, I saw I, I some criticism about. saying that like, oh, this didn't need to be like a mini series. This could have been yeah, like well, a ninety minute movie. I agree with that. That like, listen, I whenever like stuff like this is made um even like regular like feature film documentaries like this get made i'm just like i don't want to be the guy to be like you know everybody's watching this very important thing this very important story and it's becoming a big conversation topic i don't want to be the guy to be like hey by the way like this isn't exactly like made that well like i don't (laughs) i don't want to be that guy um and, and, and like at times it's kind of glaring i mean there's like a moment at the end of the second episode of the show where the entire episode they have spent hinting at this this child actor who was abused but unnamed and then at the end of the episode it cuts to a chair an empty chair and drake bell walks on set and sits down and it's like the cliffhanger to end the episode and i was like this is kind of obnoxious i was like this is kind of because <laughs> in a like documentary YouTube, film you wouldn't have, yeah like in a documentary film you wouldn't have a cliffhanger you wouldn't need it because it's one continuous thing yeah. um, but of course it's and and like there's parts of the series where like they're explaining things and i'm like listen man you guys could have cut the whole 20 minutes. i'm not saying it's like not important but the but the way they go about presenting some of the information i'm like you didn't need this ultimately though i was like <sighs> overwhelmed emotionally by the actual content of it regardless of the quality like right. there was a moment when i was watching the second episode I don't know how much you have like seen about this on social media. I don't know like how many things you know about what's in the documentary. Um, there's a moment where they reveal that one of these abusers, this pedophile, uh, was pen pals with John Wayne Gacy. What the fuck? Like, like had a le- like wrote letters back and forth with John Wayne Gacy. My like stomach dropped and I and I like almost threw up. Like I was like that is a crazy piece of information it like it, these people are like really fucking evil and then watching the third and fourth episode today especially watching the third episode i just cried through like the entire thing because this man who uh was abusing drake bell it just the most like evil manipulation imaginable he like pretty much like inserted himself as deeply as he could into drake bell's life and then a lot of the conversation on social media has been like, oh, where were the parents in this? Like the parents should have gotten involved. They should have been watching their children better. And Drake Bell's dad, from like the moment this guy showed up, was like, I don't like this guy. I don't like how much time he's trying to spend around my kids. And they pretty much forced Drake Bell's dad off set. And like this guy got in the way and like ruined Drake Bell's relationship with his father so that he could get Drake Bell alone. And it's just like the most heartbreaking thing in the world. And like you see Drake Bell's dad like talking about it and you're just like, man, this is just fucking terrible. Um, it, yeah, it's like a tough watch. Um, and I I don't know. I hope th- that there's some convers. I hope that's something like in regards to how children are protected on sets uh, comes out of it, because I don't know that that environment is much better now. I mean, I'm sure it's better than it was in the prime of Nickelodeon television, but I don't know how safe those sets actually are today for kids, especially just like mentally. Um, so I hope yeah. like conversations are had about this as a, as a result of the documentary. Um, but it's a tough watch. I don't know. People should watch. Like I said, it's not, listen, like it's not the, mo- the most well-made documentary, but like that doesn't. I was going to say, I was gonna be like, do you um, recommend it? Um, yeah, I would say you... people should watch it. Um, okay. I mean, it's a lot though. Like it's like I said, like I literally felt sick watching it. So um, I will not you know, be tuning in. Watch, watch with caution, <laughs> I guess. If if you're gonna do it, um, uh, yeah. do you? That's... How do you feel about um, child actors in general? You think? Because there is like I a little know. bit of like a well, there is like the like a kind of a conversation Can saying like. <laughs> what no, 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 there is like a conversation around like people saying that like uh, like children just shouldn't like be allowed uh, to be on like big professional yeah. sets like this i thought there was like a it was a very subtle moment in the documentary but i thought there was like a real heartbreaking part of it where drake bell kind of talked about 
how this was going on during some of the best moments of his life. And when he looks back, those are all a blur to him. And only this like really bad thing that happened to him is what he can remember. And the way he talks about those moments and like, uh, there's like kind of this like thing that hints at it where he essentially is like, you know, I like, I'm glad that I got to like experience these things. And, and this was like this thing I cared so much about. And it's like, from that perspective, like, I don't, you know, I think children should be able to act because I think there is like a, a, especially when you hear him talking about it, when he first gets introduced, there's like a really obvious passion for this stuff. Like there are kids who really love to do this stuff and really like care about it. And, and like, you know, this is their life because they, not because their parents chose it, but because they actually love it. Yeah. Um, And they should be able to do that in like a way that is safe and like be protected. Um, So no, I don't think that like we should just not have child actors. I just think that they, should be taken care of in a way where stuff like this doesn't ever happen. Um, but it's very sad that it happened to so many people at like the biggest place possible for all these kids to be. I um, went to um, Drake Bell's Twitter account because I saw like uh, he's tweeted something about it. Um, this is a total aside, but he's like really into like crypto scams now. Uh, <laughs> his Twitter name is like is like Drake Bell ETH. And I went to his Twitter account just to see if he said anything more, but it's like all just like retweets to win like whatever like you know, like fake cryptocurrency and all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> I saw him post a TikTok. I saw that he had to post a TikTok because um because people were being like really awful to Josh Peck on social media mm-hmm. and like saying, like, why didn't you do this? And blah blah blah. And he posted a TikTok like kind of just like defending him because of how awful people were being. Um so I don't know. He's like engaging with, I mean, I've seen comment sections on a bunch of people involved. There was like a, what was it? Um, James Marsden. If, uh, if you, if you read the comments on, a, on James Marsden's Instagram, not very nice. Cause he, not very, uh, yeah. he wrote a letter of support to uh, a letter of support for the, the guy that abused Drake Bell. Um, his, his comments are not a nice place for him to be, I imagine. Um, I don't know if he's reading those, but it, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's like made a statement. I don't know, but uh, real gross behavior. That is very um, bizarre. Yeah, uh, I expected more from Sonic the Hedgehog's friend. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know. The documentary like frames it in a way where it's like these people wrote these letters without knowing. Like it was like they were fed misinformation and they didn't know like the extent of like what they did. But I'm like there's no way they didn't know a, a child was involved, you know? Like, it's like, why would you not be yeah. taking the side of the child? Like, it's like, they had to at least yeah. tell you something, even if they didn't give you details. I don't know. It's just very troubling. Anyway, enough about Quiet on set. Um, we can start by talking about Late Night with the Devil and this whole AI. Yes. De- I mean, we don't really need to talk about this. We'll talk about the movie specifically, but I guess it's more just like the impact of what we have seen in this movie, which is... For those who are completely offline, I imagine that's nobody if you listen to our podcast, but um, the new film, Late Night with the Devil, has three still images that were created using AI. Um, The directors have made a statement about it, confirming that they used AI. Um, The movie was made two or so years ago 2022 like, is when they would have been yeah. in post um and and that has kind of been like a, a point of conversation of how like this was not the hot topic that it has been over the past couple months because of the strike when they made it um and that there weren't like any regulations or whatever um i think also it's worth noting that um some of what they're the filmmakers are are, that the filmmakers are saying and confirming is a little dubious and has been called into question um, because it's like the, the claim is like, Oh, these three interstitial like cut to commercial break cards. Cause the, the concept of the film is that it's a, uh, it's like a live broadcast television show. Right. Um, and uh, they have like these, um these like, we'll be right back. Kind of like, like cards. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. There's also people saying that they believe, and it, it's impossible to prove this stuff right but like there's also people claiming that they believe that um parts of the set design were also made 
made using yeah. ai yeah. Um, which are just like in every shot of the movie apparently um, yeah um i i've kind of like broken this down into a couple of like topics slash questions because i don't because there's a lot uh that we can touch on and maybe look at with some nuance i tried to make a tiktok about this and i was like man I started once I started getting like one negative comment. I was like, man, there's no way to like really explain this in a TikTok. It's, it's, a, like it's complicated. Um, so it's I guess more complicated like than people are yeah, giving it credit for. Uh, I guess the natural place to start would be. How how big of a deal is this? Like what we have seen the 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 use of these images in this film like how big of a deal is it do should people care that this is a thing that happened right yeah 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 should, should people yeah I, like the big question is does this matter right yeah <laughs> um yeah yes yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Right? i think we're it's, in agreement I mean, yeah, it's enough to make there. me and kevin both not want to see the movie and we didn't go to yeah. the movie. i had tickets um, purchased to go watch this movie that i yeah that i refunded I, like, and that, that was actually that was like another thing i wanted to touch on but i guess we could just like kind of cover that base immediately which is like a lot of people are saying like you know this is uh this is unfortunate but it's no reason to quote unquote boycott the film um like you should still support indie films is what like a lot of people's talking point um listen this is not like some organized call to action that is going on there's not like an actual it really like, isn't effort yeah. being made to boycott this film doug and i simply didn't want to go see it because of the use of ai and we will watch it uh at another time maybe possibly but yeah. like we're not like telling people that they have to not watch the film. We have friends who have seen the film and who are still going to see the film. And it is fine if they want to do that. Yeah. Um, I almost I want to go see it anyway, because I had already purchased tickets, um, but then yeah. I decided not to at the last minute. Um, and so, so, so that's like a, a big thing. It's like, we're not like, like forcing people's hands to not go see this movie like morally i don't really want to give money to this movie and that is just like where i lie on the issue still probably but a lot of i, th I think one thing that needs to be cleared up is that a lot of people are like this is not the right way to go about it because this is like a small film and like you know like if this was made for like a big studio film then it would make more sense and i'm like these people <laughs> have been paid yeah like the people who made this movie the first people that get money back when you buy tickets are the, are the, are studio, the, the producers are the cast and crew yeah. and like the people like these people got their paycheck already yeah so like it's not really like people are like oh you should support this for uh david desmalchian i'm like yeah that he guy got, got a paycheck paid. yeah and he got paid. uh i don't know if you like a lot listen i get that it's like a big deal because it's kind of like his first like leading role and people are a big fan of him as an actor um he's gonna get another leading role and also regardless like the whole meme about him is how much he shows up in movies like the guy is not going to have trouble getting cast in movies because we are not watching this movie um and ultimately another thing is that like this isn't a big movie. Like a lot of people weren't going to see. If anything, this movie is maybe being seen by more people now because I think this it almost happened. for sure is being seen by more people now. Like like a, like all, like a hundred percent. Very limited release. Yeah, like it's not. Like I've a seen big, so like, many people say like, I don't see what the big deal is. I'm gonna go see the movie anyways, and I'm like, I've seen like I'm not joking. Probably forty people say that. Yeah. Um, like on individual posts and i'm like i've seen way more people say that than people say like don't go watch this movie right, in individual exactly. posts. Like, um and and i think the reason why from our perspective we stress that it is a big deal is kind of because of what this means outside of only this movie like where we are leading toward as a result of a movie that can get away with doing something like this and as we just said like people are going to go watch this still anyway so like there is at least a, a, a sizable crowd of people who really don't care if the, i know i've seen people on social media 
say that they don't they wouldn't even care if way more ai was used like i've seen people like in th like tweet replies be like i don't care if they wrote the whole script using ai i'm like okay well that's like uh you know from our perspective awful but it's like people would still go people don't really care about three images in a movie um it just doesn't mean a lot to the average moviegoer i think i mean half the comments on my tiktok that i mentioned yeah are essentially just people being like, great, I'm going to go watch it. Like that, that was like a thing. Like I had like a thread of comments of people being like, can't wait to watch this tonight. I'm like, okay. So you know what I mean? It's like people uh, are doing this. Or yeah. 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 Um, and it's very, it's all very bizarre. Cause for me, honestly, for me, it's not even just that I, um, it's not even like a moral grandstanding or anything. I'm just right. like, I don't want to watch a movie like that, you know. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> like, I, yeah, like, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch a movie like that. Elements of the movie made by people who aren't, who don't fucking exist. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and it's like <laughs> the problem with it is that people are saying like they use this as a tool, right? The way that the the, the directors uh, worded their statement was that they used AI. And then it was further edited to like get to this final product. Um, newsflash, if you've seen the fucking picture, it doesn't really look like it was further edited, does it? <laughs> like, Yeah, by further editing, I think they were talking about like color correction and color grading and stuff yeah, and shit. It's like, like the, the AI elements of the art still look like AI. Um, and what I was hinting at before, which is like really the thing that I want to talk about, is this idea uh, that this is a very slippery slope and and accepting AI at this like minor stage is the beginning of accepting it at a larger stage if studios know that they can get away with it. If studios know that they can replace somebody whose job is as small as an illustrator who just makes these little art stills for 15 seconds of a movie, then maybe they push to using AI for the, uh, you know, audio and then eventually for scripts and, and who knows what, I mean, any job on set that can be replaceable, if they know they can save money doing it, these are people who would want to do that. the studios. I mean, specifically are people who would want to do that. Um, I can, can I like, I'll say for sure one thing, because um, you said how people were claiming like, oh, it's just being used as a tool, right? Um, and how in this case, like, that's like not a good argument in this case, whereas um, because the term AI is so broad and doesn't yeah. fucking mean anything, right? It's uh, there, there's been a little bit of discussion about how um, uh, in Dune Part 2, uh, the, the special effects artists developed an AI tool to help them... Um, uh do, like do the the like the rotoscoping i guess is what you would say for all the eyes to turn the eyes blue because in the right. first part in the first dune they um they had to do it all by hand um, right. <laughs> because of the the technique that they were just um using um so for the second one they created uh you know like like an algorithm that they're a machine learning algorithm that they are calling ai um an ai tool to help them do that for the second movie that's like an actual tool right yeah. <laughs> this is um and that's that's fine because that's gonna happen like that that is yeah. just like actually just like like the that's nature like, of technology like yeah, that's, exactly um, that's what i was gonna say um, um but this specific use of ai and you know more about this stuff than i do i'm not like the most tech savvy person but no, it's yeah, like I it mean, is it is it it borrows images which like that is a, a key part of the issue is that it is taking pre-existing like it, it, the images used in this movie were not like conjured by like like out of thin air they were they are created through use of images but other images that are accessible uh to like yeah, put this like... together the we don't know what um like what ai program or model that they used on late night with the devil is right. um but all of the 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 popular ones all of like the like the really big major ones um uh like dolly 
or uh, Mid Journey is like a really big one. It's like yeah. they're trained off of these fucking massive databases of pictures. And the databases are so big. It's basically like most of the internet. It's like just anything yeah. you can find on fucking Google images a lot of the time. And so much of that shit is just like, you know, original artwork, yeah. copyrighted artwork. Like, you know, yeah. just. Uh, and then like repurposed for for this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. For like what this final product is. Uh, and that is the troubling thing because it's like if you're using, in some cases, like information that you get from other people's original work, then you can pay people for original work, especially because in this movie's case, it this is not like I know people are like, it's an indie film, they had to like save money. I'm like, do you know how cheap it would be to hire an illustrator to do what ends up being this use of AI in the film? Yeah, I mean, we're talking like, like low like hundred like, dollars. <laughs> yeah, like you can like this is Compared to their budget, I mean, this and is movies have nothing. this movie had probably like a, few, a several million dollar budget. Yeah, like, like it is. I mean, this is you can find people to do this kind of work for like a hundred bucks on the internet that like do this exact kind of work. Um, I like, guess it is like, just embarrassing to cut that kind of corner. But then, like um, the other argument is that um, they wanted it to look like this little AI thing, and then my response would be like don't want to do that don't do that yeah don't, know? yeah like it that. looks bad it looks bad. yeah it, lo it looks bad it also is weird because like i've seen people say like that the argument is that like it's supposed to be this kind of like like because it's like the the devil and like it's supposed to be like this weird kind of like like it matches the vibe i'm like it doesn't though and also this movie takes place in like the 70s or something so like yeah it really so it really doesn't um i don't know i mean i'd have to see the movie to get the full context but like my understanding and honestly just my position regardless of even if i had the context is that I don't want to fucking look at that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's my biggest that's thing not... is I just don't want to see these pictures. And that's my big yeah. thing about anybody, like anybody, even like these, th there's like TikTok filters and shit that go viral everywhere on Twitter and shit, right? Yeah. Um, where it's like, it's like, oh, myself as a PS2 character that are using like these generative AI um, models to create images not created by a person. And I'm at the point where it's like, I don't want to look at these pictures on my internet, you know? Yeah. I don't want to see I mean, this. Do I don't know, want to see it. Yeah. It's like, do you know how, uh, cause the point I made at, at like referencing what I said earlier is that like, you know, at some point we can, we can see this kind of snowball into something bigger. Like we can see AI being used to replace other artists and to like further contribute to the final product of a movie, uh, having elements that aren't made by real artists and like, can you imagine how fucking bleak it would be when we when the first movie that is like written by a computer gets met? Like, yeah, I mean, it would just be terrible. I'm not that I'm going to fucking watch it, but like. It would be yeah, very like, yeah, you know, it's going to really get fucked up is. um, So uh, I think this is going to hit video games before it hits movies really hard, but um, there's going to be AI actors. And what I mean by that is I think there's going to be voice like voice acting yes, that is entirely that is, generated. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was kind of um, hinting at with the audio, which is like, I mean, it would be very easy for them to do voice acting with. Uh, with I think AI. that we're going to see that implemented in video games like like I like like soon, like, yeah, I think, sooner, like really yeah, soon. sooner than we, like, would, we, we would like. Um, yeah. Like, uh, and I guess that like to tie this into the final thing I wanted to talk about, which is a piece of news, but I think it makes more sense to talk about it here, um, which is that OpenAI has reportedly scheduled meetings with Hollywood studios, media executives, talent agencies to form partnerships with the entertainment industry. And they reportedly want to encourage filmmakers to integrate AI into their work. Um, this report came out like two days after this whole late night with the devil. I mean, we, like it was a hot topic conversation. And then immediately after we got this report that open AI is scheduling meetings for by the time you're listening to this, probably today, like these meetings are probably yeah. going on this this week as you're listening to this episode um, between we'll open AI and, it. and studio I, executives. Yeah, we'll know more about that after it happens, probably. But um, if you don't know, open AI is the uh, through the Microsoft's own company that um uh they developed the gpt 
model, the chat GPT language model, uh, which is like yeah. probably the when when you think of AI or when anybody anybody thinks of AI, that's probably what they, they think of is the chat GPT because it's been yeah. so widely accessible for so long. Yeah. Um, so it's like but it's just like the really really just like the the worst report imaginable in terms of like the outlook of the industry um like we well, knew especially... we were nearing a corner during the strikes i mean this is yeah. such a recent thing we fucking spent you know months of our podcast talking about this, this kind of stuff during the strike um and then within a year's time less than a year's time of the strike ending really only a couple months time of the strike ending um and we get something like this and uh referring to the movie specifically and then something like this report which means that like the near future can be much worse than what than the movie we're talking about right now. Yeah. Um, SAG and the WGA really fucked up. <laughs> they really yeah. fucked up. They kind of like laid. They kind of like rolled over with the AI yeah. stuff. Um, uh, and I was I, I saw I don't remember her name, but I saw uh, a video of somebody in SAG talking about that and how not everybody was on board with that vote, but. Uh, but the the common sentiment was that like the strike had to end, um, yeah, yeah, and we're seeing pretty bad results kind of immediately. Um, yeah. uh, hopefully, the listener sentiment is similar to our own, which is that like this is not the kind of art that we want. <laughs> like we do not want specifically like this art in this movie and uh other like future uses of ai being um, the kinds of ai you know like i i hope i hope it's clear to people that we're you know i think what you made clear with the dune example is that we're referring to ai that replaces artists that like makes it so that elements of a movie a final product are very clearly not made by human artists um stuff that like actually affects the art um there there will be people that are like oh why didn't you guys talk about uh um secret invasion when that was coming out and the answer is that we don't watch stuff like that <laughs> yeah i mean i saw yeah there's like a big tweet like i saw somebody have a big tweet it's like marvel did this before and and you guys didn't complain about this then i was like man first of all one i did complain about it two you'd have to find it in a sea of fucking things that i complained about regarding marvel <laughs> you know what i mean it's like this is yeah. not really it's like that's not we really don't the talk thing. about it's shit like, like that and the thing yeah, is like, it's like when when something like this it's not it's not really our fault whether something becomes like a hot topic like a hot cultural topic you know like it's like when when this becomes as wide scale as the conversation has been over the past week then of course we're going to talk about it because it's a it's a big wide scale thing nobody made a big deal about this when it was marvel doing it um but i did i mean we i i'm pretty sure we talked i don't know if we talked about it on the podcast but i'm pretty sure when they used that like ai um thing for i don't know what was it the trailer for secret invasion or was it, it was like, for the it was for like the the intro like the like the, like during the theme song i almost want to i don't want to guarantee it but i almost want to say we talked about it on the news on the podcast like uh, if not then then the three of us at least talked about it in private multiple times like it's like it's not like this yeah. wasn't a conversation and i mean that even was a conversation on social media like i it was kind of a big people were making tiktoks about it people were talking about it on twitter like i i vividly remember i mean this wasn't that long ago um so it's not like people didn't talk about this stuff at all and we're like trying to shit on this like low budget indie movie but it's like it's very clear that the people involved in this movie made the decision to do this and they i saw something today uh about a q a they did after one of the screenings of this movie like yesterday or two days ago where the directors kind of expressed that they regret the choice and they wished that they hadn't done it. And they mentioned what I said earlier about how the movie, you know, was made two years ago. Um, still, maybe that could have been changed in the post-production process, like before the actual movie's release. But regardless, like they, they don't love the fact that they did it. Hopefully more people don't want to do things like this in the future, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if that happens and uh we'll we'll talk about it then like it's like you know like we've this isn't like something that 
uh, is just coming out of the blue and like we've never cared about. Um, this has kind of been a hot topic, at least on our podcast for a while. Um, yeah. So. And, 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 and there, there's people, right. It's, it's very important that we're like very specific about, about it. It's, we just, we, we just, <laughs> just don't want to see movies made yeah. by a computer. Um, yeah. There are, I already know there's going to be some people that in their mind, they're going to be like, does this mean you're not going to talk about, um, uh, 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 fuck, what is that movie called? Oh my God. Um, the uh, Harmony Corinne, the Harmony Corinne movie. Oh, um, uh, what's it called? What's it called? Wow, <laughs> I don't even remember the name of it. Either. Agro Drift. Jesus Agro Christ. Drift. There you go. <laughs> oh my God. That was so bad. Yeah. I hate when that happens. <laughs> um, Agro Drift. Uh, we will 100% talk about Agro Drift. I, I want to say once it becomes widely available and that uses if it becomes widely uh, available if it be ever becomes widely <laughs> available um uh because none of us are going to go we have the opportunity to none of us are going yeah. to go pay to go see it in that fucking club experience with yeah, harmony no, current presence on that um uh and that that is another discussion because that is lots of um generative ai special effects lot lots of like ai special effects throughout the whole thing um, and I think there's going to be another discussion we can have about that maybe when it comes out because and about like the the how we feel about the intent behind that because of course that's like sure. an artist doing this but we'll see but yeah 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 um, I mean it's like that's what I'm being like it's like this is not some conversation that just spawned uh, like this past week because of this movie this was the hottest debated topic of the strike that went on for a record amount of time. You know, like it's like this is not some some new thing that people are now all of a sudden upset about. This is I mean, this has been a conversation outside of the film industry. Really, this has been like an overarching idea in our culture for several years now. Um, so I don't know. Uh, we'll talk about it more when when we know more about it. But that's that's as much as we can say, I guess, about Late Night with the Devil, having not seen the movie. Um Moving on to movies we have seen, let's start by talking about Immaculate because I think that is the movie both of us like significantly more than the other movie we'll talk about. Um, uh, Immaculate is the Sydney Sweeney starring Michael Mohan directed uh, new film, neon film, uh, where she plays a nun uh, who goes on a uh, who goes to a convent in italy i want to say uh um, yes and italy. and um things at this convent end up being not, not as they so seem great. yeah not, not as, they, as seem. they seem um okay. everything is so amazing in her life and she's so ready yeah. for this new life experience <laughs> and then things are not as they seem yes so um let's start yeah. by talking about sydney sweeney who i think deserves She's a very lot good. of credit for yeah. not just her performance in this but really for like the entire inception of this movie from script to screen as like somebody who found this script was interested in it got it produced like attached a director who she has worked with before that, that she has a good relationship with um like yeah. really a lot of effort to get this project made and i think there's a, a very clear difference between how maybe the general public perceives Sydney Sweeney and who she actually is and uh who she actually is is a pretty fucking awesome artist <laughs> like a pretty uh not just a good actress but like somebody who is making a cool career choice with this movie uh at like the height of her fame really I mean as she's like continuing her her rise I mean she's only going to get more famous yeah she's, she's in, only going to get in more the famous. midst of yeah she's in the midst of like being on that rise and then she comes out with this movie which is like in a lot of ways we'll talk about it when we you know talk spoilers in the ending but like a lot of ways could be a, received pretty controversially um, oh and what do you mean could be yeah, it <laughs> it is sure. like actively. okay no <laughs> well yeah it, it is being received controversially i mean i mean uh more specifically like the politics are pretty, pretty like, uh, yes, that's what like, I was going to say. Yeah, I was like, yeah. it's being, I'm saying it's being received controversially by a pretty specific crowd, which is typically a crowd that wh whose opinions on movies we don't care about as much. <laughs> um, specifically because they, uh, are so 
their politics are so far separated from the politics of like most of what we see in uh, Hollywood films or just like in film in general. Um, but they are not a fan of the messaging of the movie, which like I said, we'll get to. Um, but like just a cool choice on her part to make this fucking weird nun horror movie um, in, in the midst of like euphoria nearing its third season. And like, she's that doing like, she's do- sure, whatever. But like, uh, <laughs> like a, a major like rom-com like you know like a hit rom-com that is like a very safe project like by all accounts you know yeah um and then just like jumping to this <laughs> you know madam webb's in between there but like obviously like uh like she said like madam webb is a, a big opportunity for her to get paid as well <laughs> yeah um, so that she can make something like immaculate um so yeah, she fucking she's great. I thought she was good in the movie as well. And she's like, like, per, like performance wise. I thought I thought she was utilized quite well. I think there's like a, a I, I when I when I listened to uh, Michael Mohan's interview, uh, he said that this was not like a conscious conversation that him and Sidney Sweeney have. But it's like seems very clear that he understands how to like utilize her well as a performer, like to her strengths. Um, mm-hmm. Like he knows like what works for for her and how he can like get the best out of her and well she... i mean because they've been working together for over 10 years you know yeah well they started on like a tv show i forget the name of the tv show but um it was like a pretty small like tv show about I it was kind of a big something. i thought it was kind of a big show i i think it was pretty small it was like an oh, early okay. netflix show oh um, yeah that's what i was gonna say i was like i thought it was like a pretty somewhat hit on streaming but i don't know i don't really know what well, my well thing is like i had there. never heard of it until i yeah i was okay, doing research for fair. this movie <laughs> that's what i'm like uh, i feel like it's pretty small probably right yeah but they have um, like a, a strong relationship and and they enjoy working together um how do you feel about michael mohan as a director i guess like specific to this movie i don't i've only know. seen immaculate but, um yeah. and i've seen so, like how do you feel about the voyeurs this um, movie specifically i guess yeah, uh, this movie's cool. Um, I really, really like it. I think that the final scene is so fucking sick. <laughs> it's so yeah, dope. it's really cool. Um, um, and like, there's a lot of cool moments in it. Uh, I, I, I'm curious as to like how much, because uh, of course, like we we know that cinema is a is a uh, as, as a collaborative medium, right? Sure. And um, Sydney Sweeney has said that she was involved uh, on every stage of this film. She was involved in the rewrites of the script, and then she was also involved in like and like the framing and shooting of the film, not just uh, acting. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious as to how much control she had on the film. It seemed like yeah. she was this is something that she was felt very uh, strong about, or was yeah. like very uh, motivated about. Um, but I think that uh, I think it's like shot pretty well. There's some cool moments in it that look really nice. I think that the performances are all pretty fun. Um, yeah, no, I think it's shot. I think it's shot very well. And I like. I mean, I like. I heard him say that he is somebody who like really values those images more than say the story. Um, mm-hmm. Like he kind of said that like a lot of times he finds destinations finds like images that he can see in his head and and frames a story around those images um so like so when you watch the movie like you can tell that there's care put into that like you can tell that there's that that he cares about how the movie looks and not mm-hmm. just like the story because the story uh is something i wanted to talk about because i think maybe if there were a common complaint about the film it's that the script is kind of bad according to a lot of people um i'm i'm gonna say this as somebody who is usually the one that's like gonna be critical of a script i really don't have any problems with it i actually kind of like the fact that the script does not give us any details at all really i mean like very minimal characterization like very minimal background as to not just like the characters but this this place that they're at like we don't get like you know like horror movies always do this kind of like unraveling backstory when you have a place like this like it's like there's there's kind of like this moment somewhere in the second half of the film where the the lead finds out all of these things about this place and like this deep dark history like the movie just skips that stuff well, um, no, it doesn't. What are you talking no, about? No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't like skip it, but it's not like 
it's uh, no it, there's obviously there's the scene where he describes <laughs> like what they do there and and whatnot and, and it's, it's not she it's not goes presented. into the room and finds her folder yes and then, but it's yeah. not presented in the way that another movie would do it where it's like information first action later it is kind of like this joining thing where like she is you know like that scene we're talking about where she's like captured by the priest um, yeah and he like explains what's going on it's like that is both a creepy scene where stuff is ha- like action is happening and we're learning background like the movie is, is very good about like being a 90 minute movie that like is a 90 minute movie and just like having stuff going on the entire time and mm-hmm. in a horror movie more than anything that is something i can appreciate as opposed to like there's lots yeah. of exposition like littered through scenes that are exposition scenes which like this the movie sh- doesn't have a ton of the structure of this movie is funny because there's a moment like an hour in i don't know how long is the movie like an hour and a half in maybe yeah. where um where the movie's just like all right we got to wrap this shit up now and it's just like she just starts you know and then the end of the movie starts to happen and it's like oh, okay sure. <laughs> yeah and it's um, very it's very silly while watching it because it's like okay <laughs> we the movie has to wrap itself up now and that's like um it has to get to yeah. the end it's no i mean that, and that's that what i mean like it's like maybe fun. it's not like that's what i'm saying where it's like it's clearly not like the best script in the world um yeah, but it's my yeah. my my point was more that like i just don't care as much like i can appreciate that the movie has a very clear idea of what it's trying to say and maybe at times it makes it like a little bit too obvious um you know hinting at the ending um uh and maybe some other parts like it's not you know it's not the most subtle script it's not like a difficult movie to understand um and that's fine like i i appreciate that like we cut a lot of the fat and we just kind of like have this movie that tells you what it's about and does it in a pretty fun way <laughs> like like really fun throughout kind of i really was never not interested like i thought there was like a lot of fun imagery i thought it was like i thought it built a nice atmosphere i don't particularly think it was scary at all but that's not something that i care about as much with like a horror movie i know a lot of I other saw... people who are you know big horror fans want it to scare them a certain way and are then disappointed when it is not scary in that way I saw some people I, talk about how it's like very um jump scare heavy. Um and I just want to say that's a really dumbass thing word? to say about this movie. <laughs> is heavy the word? I feel like I I think I think a lot of criticisms I saw of the film were that the jump scares were not very like original, which to me like that doesn't mean much. Yeah, not everybody's um, not everybody's yeah, yeah, I know when I, I know when I was with I know when I was with George the other day. I I mentioned to George that I was seeing Immaculate, and um, and he made it very clear that he's not a fan, which is fine. Like that's what I like. Like a lot of people, a lot of people who are into horror do yeah. not like a horror movie that is like simple and doesn't really like take any swings. I guess at like well, this does in, though. No, 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 no. I'm yeah, yeah. I I, I think it takes swings yeah as a whole but i'm i'm more referencing swings in terms of something like jump scares where like these are pretty expected and like not anything that we haven't seen before and like i think that's fine like personally jump scares for me least favorite part of the whole thing unless like you really commit to it like i don't really care about jump scares unless i'm watching like a movie that is genuinely like terrifying and like that's what it's trying to do like like unless i'm watching a movie where like this is scaring the shit at me i'm gonna have nightmares and they wanted me to have nightmares then then that's fun like they did it but otherwise like i don't you don't really need to get all that creative with the jump scares like because because for me the scariest part of the movie is like what is happening to sydney sweeney in the movie <laughs> um like it's just it's a it's a creepy idea like conceptually yeah no yeah um, it is and um, can we get into spoilers now? We're going to spoil the end of yeah, this yeah, movie. Yeah, we can, we can spoil um, the Because yeah. this is the important part. If you don't, and I'm going to, so honest with you, uh, if you are interested in seeing this movie, like if you are interested in seeing this movie, if you're going to see it anytime soon, you don't want to know how it ends because it ends very cool. It's a very cool ending. Uh, so yeah. skip this part. Go listen to us yeah. talk about Roadhouse. Yeah, yeah so, go listen to the Roadhouse conversation. <laughs> um, this movie, it's the, uh, the way that this fucking movie ends, right? Is so cool. And it makes such a crazy statement. Cause obviously the whole thing is about 
you know, it's like, you know, the comment is not um, actually a, uh, a, a comment. It's a cult. Um, and they right. are trying to clone Jesus Christ. It's a very silly idea. Um, but they are, and it's called immaculate because of course, immaculate conception, the, you know, mother Mary. Um, right. And, but they, this, but like, it's about, they, Sidney Sweeney is pregnant and this group of Catholics are trying to force her to give birth against her will. You know, that is so very like pointed yeah. and so specific. And so like be kind of like obvious and beating you over the head with it. But then at the end, it gets even better because she, it, it works. She is forced to give birth and then she gives birth and then she fucking kills the baby. It's yeah. so awesome. And it fucking, so rocks. fucking It rocks so hard. The whole end scene when she escapes, like the very final scene, and it's like she's giving birth and it's just like close up of and her she's fucking screaming, screaming for, like, for two minutes. Probably like two minutes. Yeah. Like probably yeah. goes on for it's just her fucking while. screaming and this very close up covered in blood. Then you hear the throat boom. And it's yeah. a baby popping out of her vagina, landing on the ground, and then, you, and then she and yeah, and then you the watch as she goes. Oh, I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah, she, that's she bites gnarly. off the umbilical cord. And I, then she... the reaction to that in my theater was like audible. Like a lot of people made a really made a noise that I don't think I've heard too many times before during a movie. <laughs> and then she walks over and picks up the rock, and this is all one shot. And then she crushes yeah. the baby that you could hear breathing because it's obviously probably like some fucked up little baby, but you don't really see it. Um yeah. and then she kills it. And the movie's over. Amazing. No yeah. notes. 10 out of 10. No notes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect way I, to like, end I mean, yeah, like you said, like not very subtle, but I do like I do appreciate kind of how um how often the movie kind of weaves in the uh, the ideas of you know like the church controlling women's bodies and i guess specifically just like men in general because like one thing i thought about by the time i got to the end was kind of like the earliest scene of the movie which is like from the very opening we see her in like italian security as she's like arrived in italy and right. the two yes. workers there talk to each other in Italian. She can't understand them. And they're pretty much like, oh, what a shame. Like, she's so young and she looks like that. And she's just going to be a nun. And it's like, from the very beginning, it, it yeah, it's like, what a waste. Puts forth, yeah, like it yeah. puts forth this idea that like they should have any say over her sexuality and her body and like blah, blah, blah. Um, which I like. Yeah, like I really appreciate it. I'm like, I, you know, like once you once you get to that ending, you're like, oh, this is really hard to misunderstand, but but I like how it opens and and you you know you could look back in retrospect at the beginning and be like yeah this was really like littered throughout the script like people are calling it a bad script I'm like it really does present this idea in a in in a good way which is like not subtle but but continuously builds as you watch like from that interaction until you see more and more of like what is happening and kind of unraveling. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, yeah, um, it's I really good. I watched that. it with I... my sister and as we were leaving the theater because uh, she likes um, the kind of movies that she likes to go watch in theaters are like pop poppy horror stuff. Like think like The Conjuring or, or stuff like right. this. Like um, she doesn't like. Yeah, like they're like um, <laughs> they played a bunch of trailers Like they played um, in a violent sense or what's that movie called? Oh, in a violent nature. The, in a violent the, like, nature. That movie looks so sick. Yeah. She was like, cool. I don't want to go see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> um, but um, uh, uh, after it was to be relieving Immaculate, and she was like, I feel like that um, that 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 uh, that was trying to say something, and it wasn't very subtle. Um, and I was like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. <laughs> Speaking of the opening, the one thing I wanted to ask you, or not the one thing, but another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I, I just talked about that, I kind of glossed over what the real opening of the film is, which is like, we kind of get this like opening kill with like the previous nun oh, yeah. before we actually meet Sidney Sweeney's character, who is played by Simona Tabasco, who was on The mm -hmm. White Lotus this past season and was like my <laughs> favorite character. Like she, no, like I'm saying it because she fucking rocks. Like she was like the best performer. Like The White Lotus is like an actor show. And yeah, like yeah, nobody yeah. knows who she is because she's was she on the season of the White Lotus like, with Sydney Sweeney? Or no, Sydney Sweeney was on, Sydney the, Sweeney was on okay. the first season. Um, okay. But but she was like 
the standout of this whole season to me. I was like, she's fucking awesome. Like I'd never seen her before because she's this Italian actress who has never been in like this, like mainstream American stuff. And then like, she's doing the white Lotus and I'm like, she fucking rocks, dude. I was like, she's, I mean, and it wasn't just me. Like she was kind of the fan favorite performance. Um, and then I, I'm watching the opening of this movie, had no idea she was in it. And I see her face and I'm like, wait a second. I recognize her. <laughs> um, and I thought it was a really cool opening. I thought it was really fun. Like the whole like buried alive thing. I was like, man, that's, that's good stuff. I was like, that really set the mood. <laughs> yeah, no, it I was, was really cool. I, I, I'm kind of, uh, I, I think that the images of the, those, those other nuns with the red masks um, yeah. was pretty cool. I wish that they did. I did don't know. Yeah. I wish they did a little bit more with it. It, it is a little bit of a red herring because Sydney Sweetie's yeah, character really has the... no interaction with um, them at all. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And that that that's what I was going to say. Like, if you were really going to criticize the script, like, that's probably like the criticism where it's like they kind of introduce elements of the story that don't ever get expanded on. Mm -hmm. um, so like, that's like, like, if you want to go in like the, you know, plot holes route, which is like, that's not a plot hole. It's more just like something that's not explored. And that's kind of what I meant when yeah. I said the movie doesn't give us all these like details and over explaining because like, you know, we get stuff like that where we don't really know. We know like what's going on in the general sense. Like we know it's a cult, but like, we're like, why the fuck are these people wearing those things? Like, well, you know, we never find out <laughs> other yeah. than that. It looks, we never even creepy. see them. We don't ever even see the kind of people that are underneath them or anything. Yeah. But, yeah. We don't yeah, even, we, there's uh, not really a, uh, she gets into a fight and there's a big chase scene at the end, but it's not with any of these, <laughs> you know, guys. It's uh, or yeah, they're just kind of there. They're making yeah. decisions in the background. Who knows? The, the closest um, we got, I mean, we see them kill the, the, uh, Simona Tabasco at the beginning. And then we see her, yeah. uh, torture um who is it is a her friend uh, played by i think it's yeah benedetta. So sister yeah benedetta uh or... Roli is the yeah. <laughs> actress but her name in the movie is sister gwen i wanted to bring this up yeah i wish i wish she didn't die i know it's like a horror <laughs> movie i'm like it's fine but i was like i was really kind of like buying their relationship i thought she was like a really like nice like supporting character i was like it'd be really cool if sydney sweeney like gets her out of there and then when they did the tongue cutting thing i thought they were just gonna like put her back in the convent with like i thought no they were tongue. gonna put her back in with no yeah tongue too. and then like sydney sweeney was gonna go like save her but but no she's just dead and yeah, i was like killer. yeah and i was like that's kind of i mean listen it's what I, like like i said it's a fucking horror movie people die but like i was like damn i kind of i kind of really liked her like i really liked her care i loved like that scene she has where she kind of like which leads to her tongue being cut out when she kind of just like yells at the whole like convent um it, it was giving me um it kind of reminded me of uh of chani in dune 2 uh, uh, yeah, during exactly. uh during when paul was yeah. given his little thing and she's like this prophecy is how they enslave us yeah was, um, i mean it's the exact same energy yeah she, like i don't know i thought she was i thought she was a very likable character and i was like they got a nice little um they got a nice little dynamic here um and then yeah. she just dies um what can you do out of uh, the movie would be longer if they kept her alive and maybe that is ultimately why she just shows up as a dead body at the end and then we don't really get any more information about that um that's all my notes for immaculate you have anything else you want to say um no uh i think that the movie's really good uh i think that it's for sure worth seeing it's not gonna fucking blow your you know it, it, it's not sure. you, listen if you're a big dune 2 head you're not going to be watch this and be like huh this isn't as good as dune 2 it's like yeah no no duh duh but the movie's really good sydney sweeney i think is the fucking future um yeah she it's rocks. like i think sydney sweeney is in her fucking 2008 lebron james era right now <laughs> oh already <laughs> Two th yeah 2008 is like he's i get no i guess that's true like he's kind no no I, that's a fine yeah that's fine yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can do that. We can do 2008. That's fine. Um, Roadhouse, oh, a fuck. movie <laughs> starring it was all Jake original Gyllenhaal. Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, directed by Doug Liman, uh, which is a remake, reimagining of the original Roadhouse film starring Patrick Swayze. Uh, yeah, maybe that's um, where we start. Maybe we start the, uh, by comparing the two. The biggest joke at the end of the movie the thing that the joke that made me laugh the most was at the end of the movie when it says directed by doug lyman i i fucking laughed out loud that was so funny to me. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie okay actually let me let me touch on that a little bit i i think it makes sense to approach this 
more forwardly as a comedy and change Jake Gyllenhaal's character from the original Roadhouse character because, and I mean this with the most respect, I, I love Jake Gyllenhaal. He has long been one of my favorite actors. He cannot imitate Patrick Swayze in the original Roadhouse. He couldn't pull off that character. I, I like, I genuinely no, don't think he Patrick could. Patrick Swayze has so much aura. Dude. Yeah, I genuinely don't think Jake Gyllenhaal can do that. I think approaching this where he is like a much more like beloved character by everybody around him and, and has a real like, you know, like comedic touch to him is a, a better approach for Jake Gyllenhaal, the actor, mm -hmm. but it is less of an exciting approach to the movie as a whole for me. Like, I yeah. don't think that this is more, I don't, I don't think that making this just kind of like a straight up comedy the way that they do is nearly as appealing as the original Roadhouse and and how like silly that movie is, but in a way that is like I guess less aware of it. Although it's you know they were probably a little bit aware. Of no, it, they were the super movies. aware of it. But yeah, um, the movie maybe so maybe scary. less maybe less aware of it is not the right way to phrase it. But um, you know it's uh just a different movie entirely, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, the um, biggest my biggest note if we're comparing. Um, which you don't need to compare, but if we are right, my biggest note yeah. is that the roadhouse as in the actual physical bar, mm -hmm. um, way worse than this movie. I guess yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was going to complain that is my about. My biggest actually. note. I think that the roadhouse is in like the area, the bar that they shoot the first movie in is so good for that movie. There's this big dance there's no, area. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so much no, room. Like, there's like, no, grit or like sense of environment in this movie like they make it in fucking yeah. florida like you know nothing against well a little bit of something against florida but like <laughs> but it's just, no but it's because like you think of like florida and you think about like what the appeal of florida is to the average person in the modern day in terms yeah. of like the nightlife and how they approach it and i'm like and you and you feel that in the movie you see like these kind of like you see like the, the, the people at this roadhouse in the modern movie in the background, like the types of people hanging out at this place. And I'm like, man, this does not have like, this does not move me in the way that the original does. Like, I, I don't like this setting. I don't, I don't like the yeah. atmosphere that they've created it, here. It, the new roadhouse. Well, well, number one, the physical actual bar is a smaller environment than the old one, um, yes. which I think was, is bad. Um, and also it's the they made, the, the ambiance it looks like a fucking tiki bar like what the fuck yeah you know it's like what the I hell I... um but like it's so it's so so that that's my biggest thing where i'm like that's dumb but then i also i guess they wanted to set it in florida because of, they wanted to do boat stuff boat right. vehicle stuff yeah boat stuff lame um... <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, the boat stuff is like silly and also like doesn't really serve much of a purpose. It's fine. I, I did want to get to that later, but like my biggest like note about that was that it, and you can tell me if you disagree, but this is just generally what I think. Um, the like second half of this movie, or maybe just like the last 45 minutes, feel more closely aligned to a Fast and Furious movie than they do anything like the original Roadhouse. Like I was watching yeah. it and I was like, this is very much a, a, like giving me the vibes uh, uh, if I'm of like, I'm watching Fast and Furious 8 right now. You know, like I think Fast and Furious, Furious, Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> is a good comparison. Um, what it made me think of, honestly, actually not even just the ending, but like the entire movie made me think uh, of like anime. Mm -hmm. um which you don't oh, watch a lot of anime no i don't watch a lot of anime but are you specifically referring to the fight scenes because that is something i want to talk about the fight not even not just the fight scenes but also like the narrative like um the uh, towards the beginning there's this um when dalton first gets into florida and he goes to the bookstore for the first time and it's him talking to that girl at the bookstore i'm like this is so fucking narratively dumb and kind of like oh i mean this, and, yeah and the story is such a mess i was like uh, this is so like this is like a like a like this is like a like a video game cutscene. Like, yeah the way <laughs> that know? they introduce characters and stakes <laughs> essentially like meaningless really it's and i think especially even enhanced by the type of character that jake gyllenhaal is to the point where like when he leaves at the end spoiler when he leaves at the end, you don't really like like feel the weight of it yeah. the way that you should. Um, 
like I kind of thought that him and the um the love interest whose name I don't remember right now, uh Daniela Melchior, I, I kind of thought they had like a nice chemistry but like on the page in terms of like how their characters are written and the relationship is written like there's really not much there um it's just like it, and and the fact that he has like kind of this many subplots between the owner of the roadhouse the the love interest and then like this little girl who he clearly like cares about um because she is his in- introduction to this place and um and yeah, she seems like, a, like, like nice a, to her. Yeah, yeah like yeah. she's very nice. Like it's it's just too much. I don't like because it's like you don't really feel stakes for any of them. Ultimately, I really thought that um, Jessica Williams, who plays the owner of the roadhouse, is just kind of totally cast aside. I mean, like you really didn't even need to get Jessica Williams for the movie. Who nothing to do in this yeah, movie. And and I quite like her because I watched her in um, that Apple TV show. Um, uh, why am I forgetting the name right now? Uh, it's the therapy show shrinking, shrinking with Jason Siegel. Um, oh, okay. I think she's lovely in that show. And I, and I saw that she was in this movie and I was like, Oh, that's really exciting. Cause I haven't really like seen her in movies. So I was like, Oh, maybe she'll like, you know, maybe she'll get a little bit of recognition for that. I'm like, she is not in the movie even like she does. She does nothing in this movie. Um, that was pretty disappointing. For me, at least, um, at least season two of that show is coming out soon and then she'll get to shine. But like, damn, that Very... like, she really did nothing. And it, like in terms of how the subplots are structured, relationships, all of that, just a real letdown. Like you really just don't feel a connection to anything going on. Um, yeah i mean yeah that's like I, while watching it i was very much like this narratively has the um the value like the literature the, the literary value of like a bad video game you know <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> um speaking of though maybe in the spirit um, of a bad maybe in the spirit of a bad video game however to me you can totally tell me if you disagree because i think most people will the highlight of the movie is you're gonna say Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor. No, he's uh, fucking who, bad in this movie. I've seen a couple is, of people say he's good in this. No, 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 no. Let me let me finish. Okay. Simultane- <laughs> simultaneously, he is he is terrible. He's so bad. and and it is so fitting. It is like the only thing that creates any kind of vibe that like pulls me into this world. Even if it's a bad one, I when he shows up. I'm like, okay, now we're having fun. Like, I up until then, very little of it. I saw Post Malone have a fight when the movie started. I was like, the vibes are just off immediately. And they have been off. And then Conor McGregor shows up and and he is like being Conor McGregor in like the most annoying and awful and like he sort shows of like up. charming way he shows up and he's like a gta character <laughs> and it, like that rocks to me i was like fine like i'm like feeling like life and it's like it's like life being it's life in a bad way almost i'm like this is like like he's he's playing in an even worse movie than the one that i am currently watching yeah but i would rather be watching that movie because it is like ridiculous in a way that is at least exciting to me like i i really thought that he was fun i was like this I, guy is like clearly not an actor like he sucks but he is like bringing the most specific energy that like only conor mcgregor could bring um i thought I, it was uh, fun. I, I wish i took more notes but i didn't want to think about this movie too hard but i because I, I think that i really really think that this is so anime um like everything about this movie it, it really makes me think that it's like um this is like the kind of thing that uh, a 14 year old boys that don't watch cartoons will really, really like, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's cause it's like, it's even like, Oh, it's about like, Oh, outsider comes into a new town and it's like, yeah. Oh, he has to help out. And then it's like, Oh, now there's like, he has his own, like his rival has to come in and fight him. And it's like the big climax of the movie. is just like, Oh, them getting into a big fist fight. That put like yeah. lots of CG. That's another thing. The way this movie looks actually is an important thing to touch on. Cause this movie looks yeah. fucking bizarre. Um, really so many bizarre. drones, so many, I'm assuming like, like, ro- like robot cranes, maybe sure. um, so much, so much whipping around and movement and stuff. Um, and the fight, with, like, dude. 
and the fights i saw like a behind the scenes like breaking down how they shot the fights and it was like they did three takes for every punch um where they did like the fake punch like with like the two actors um and then they did like uh like a real punch where they punched a bag and then they did like another punch where it was like just punching through in the air right and then they like they like digitally combined all of them for every shot and i'm like yeah you could tell you could tell tell. yeah you could definitely tell this shit looks Um, fucking ridiculous like if you if you want to watch them yeah like if you want to watch a movie that feels like a video game maybe the most appealing movie you'll ever watch yeah in terms of story and and then the look and then just all of it yeah. um like it, it plays like a video game it really um, it really does yeah like it's, down, it's to, like, down to every detail um one of the notes that i had life. was that it, it feels like watching like um like a no like a zero uh like a zero gameplay like only cutscenes like <laughs> like yeah. cut of like injustice or something you know like yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah i don't know like i said i i thought Conor McGregor was was fun for all the wrong reasons. I I would be curious though, like <laughs> because we talked about uh, how like Roadhouse wasn't the original Roadhouse. I mean, wasn't like exactly well received by critics. I'm like, I wonder how much of like the conversation we're having now uh, is similar. Like, how many similarities there are to the conversation that was happening about Roadhouse when it came out uh, way back when. Um, not in know. terms of like, not in terms of look, but in terms of like how ridiculous the story is. Uh, I mean, at the time, probably could have been perceived somewhat similar to the way we're talking about this movie. There's another um, thing that I think is actually worth bringing up with the differences between them is that the original Roadhouse had sex in it. Oh, um, sure. yeah. And this movie is very sexless. Oh, um, yeah. You know well, what you know I mean? what it is. As much as I, I'm not gonna sit here and say Jake Gyllenhaal is not an attractive guy. Um, he is sure, but he's but he's attractive in a way that is so different from the way that Patrick Swayze is attractive. Like yeah. two completely different vibes, and yeah. Patrick Swayze is very much like a symbol in a way that Jake Gyllenhaal has just never been i guess kind of was like earlier in his career when he was in like that rom-com thing but like a rom-com is much different from like the outwardly like sexual movies that patrick swayze made um and and the kind of sex symbol that he was like this movie doesn't have that and i I think they're i think it's pretty obviously committed to not having that by being like you know like i said like more of a straightforward comedy and like kind of just taking a completely different approach um to the whole thing uh i don't know ultimately i was like it's just not the first roadhouse it's just it's not not. um Um, what can you do uh any final thoughts about jake gyllenhaal's roadhouse movie probably didn't need to get made probably not you know (laughs) and this is actually i will say this i think this is something we're going to see happen more often is these like 80s and 90s films that were never major hits but are like very recognizable names are just we're just gonna see them get remade like a lot of them because there's like enough to like there's enough name recognition there especially if it's something like this where it's like a straight to prime video kind of thing i i feel like it's gonna happen a lot like something like a roadhouse is going to happen a lot where it's like if you say that they're remaking this movie, it might not be the most popular movie of the 80s and 90s, but people are going to hear it and they're going to be like, oh, I know about that. And and then they'll go watch it. Um, like, I think I think that'll happen a lot. Uh, hmm. I guess it depends how successful something like Roadhouse is, but I imagine that at least like on Prime Video, a lot of people you think that they're going to remake the like movie this. Mask. I haven't seen it. Okay. So, I, don't know. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it has remake potential. I, I, I was just know. trying to think, like, what's another movie like that? And I was like, I don't know. I, don't know. I oh, I can't. Um, can't remember off the top of my head because I didn't include it in the news. 
but I know I did see a report of like some eighties or nineties property being remade a couple days ago. I don't, oh gosh, I wish I remembered what it was right now, but, but I know there is like something like that, something like a roadhouse that is like currently like confirmed to be, um, being remade. Um, and, uh, and I don't think that'll be the last thing that we see remade in that way. Um, I don't know. Uh, but but Roadhouse is kind of the perfect example, I think, because it has it has this sort of like name recognition in a modern day where so many people I know who have not watched the original Roadhouse would at least know what the original Roadhouse is. And I feel like sure. there's a number of movies like that where like studios would love to like if they have the material that can easily be reimagined in a modern way can just go and make that for a crowd of people who recognizes the name of the movie, but does not have to watch the original movie to watch the new one. Uh, and it'll just like boost their profits and, or like the amount of people that are curious about watching it because they're like, Oh, I haven't seen the original roadhouse, but I'll watch a Jake Hall roadhouse. Um, right. Yeah. I just feel like that's something that we're going to, that that's a trend that we're going to see. Um, but regardless, uh, we can wrap up roadhouse there and we can talk about, some news. news um you know as always reminding everybody to share your feedback like comment subscribe um rate the episode on spotify and apple podcasts and follow us on all our social platforms um we covered the bit of ai news that i mentioned earlier um so we can jump to just some regular movie stuff starting with ryan coogler's next film starring michael b jordan will be released in theaters on March 7th, 2025. It is described as a 1930s era vampire movie where Michael B. Jordan will be playing twins. We have touched on this on the podcast before, but now we have a confirmed release date with like the confirmed plot of the movie and it fucking rocks. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> very excited, very pumped up. Like we this. get a new Ryan Coogler movie, um, which is like reason enough to be hype. Um, yeah, new Brian Coogler movie starring Michael B. Jordan and Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> yeah, he's playing twins, uh, which is fucking awesome. Like, like vampire twins at that. Yeah, which is vampire fucking, twins. I mean, I can't like Michael B. Jordan is such a perfect. I know like it was going to be Michael B. Jordan regardless because Brian Coogler makes movies with Michael B. Jordan. Like, that's just what they do. Um, yeah. But like such a perfect casting to play vampire twins, man. I could like picture it in my head already, you know, <laughs> like it just. And they're going to it's going to be <laughs> vampires going to war with the KKK yeah like what the fuck dude it's gonna be awesome i'm so excited to see like a ryan coogler i mean it has been what nine almost nine years since creed came out that was the last thing he did before he did mcu uh like the two black panther movies yeah um and now we get to see and you know it'll be it'll be 10 years since creed where we get to see his like first non-mcu movie um, so and I imagine he still very much has all of the sauce that you can find in Creed. Um, like he is just that guy. I kind of touched on this in a TikTok, but I was like, I mean, this is just a guy who I like and and who I would like to see mentioned in conversations with the great young directors that are like of this era. And I think all he needs to do to be mentioned in those conversations is to go back and make another movie that is not an MCU movie. <laughs> like, like the second this movie comes out and is hopefully received well and and I enjoy it, we can we can immediately put Ryan Coogler back in that conversation and be like, this is the guy who made Creed, who, who made Fruitvale Station, and then who made this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fucking awesome. I'm excited. Uh, next piece of news is that Aaron Taylor Johnson was originally reported to be landing the role of the next James Bond, but it has now been reported that he has not yet been offered the role. Um, yeah, this has happened more than once. Think, um, yeah. Do you think ultimately Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be the next James Bond? I don't know. I don't know because I think that it depends on a couple of things. Namely, it depends on whether or not they are able to get Chris Nolan to make one of these movies. Because mm -hmm. if they can get Chris Nolan to agree to make one of these James Bond movies, then it's just going to be whoever Chris Nolan wants to be James Bond is going to be James Bond. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I just don't. I just feel like I and listen. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't think Chris Nolan would want to make a commitment like that. Um, I don't I know. Think, that, I don't know that they would want it either. Because I, I think they would want it. No, no, no. They okay, okay. I shouldn't say it like that. I shouldn't say it like that. Obviously, they would want Christopher Nolan to direct it. 
I'm saying in terms of like the direction in which this franchise goes, I don't think they get Christopher Nolan to make like multiple new James Bond movies. I think they could get him to direct the next James Bond movie. But then it's like the immediate aftermath of that is having a James Bond movie that follows up the Christopher Nolan movie and is nowhere near as good as the Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah, um, I mean, which we kind of saw with like the Daniel Craig movies. Yeah, so I mean, we, we got like in terms of quality. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, I just I just don't know what like their vision for this like new era is like it's cause it's obviously not going to be a standalone thing like it's like they want you know like james bond lasts for a certain amount of movies like that's always the goal is that like they're they're going to make as many movies with this new james bond as they can so i uh, i don't like there's no way christopher nolan does that i mean like i said he might do one um <laughs> But yeah, I think even I just feel like his ambitions enough. are I feel like his ambitions are too high, like coming off of Oppenheimer and knowing that he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Like, yeah, why would that thing be James Bond? But I what if know. they what if they went to Chris Nolan and they were like, hey, you could have you can get like the Oppenheimer deal where it's like you make like 10 percent of every ticket sale or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, and you we're know. giving you a five hundred million dollar budget. Yeah. Like James Bond. Yeah. Then maybe he does it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> is there. Because I know Aaron Taylor Johnson is not your dream casting for this role. Is no, it's Dev Patel. Who you would want? Okay. Dev Patel. Yes. I mean, Dev Patel was like long my dream casting as well. But I think my reaction to Monkey Man will just be that I want Dev Patel to do whatever Dev Patel wants, which maybe right. doesn't have to be James Bond. So like right. now I've kind of like put that aside because I'm like, he could probably just be in a better movie than whatever the next James Bond is. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I really like the idea or I did for a while, like the idea of reggae Jean page playing the next James Bond, because he is just like the most charming guy in dungeons and dragons. And I was like, I really see this. I see his appeal now. <laughs> like, uh, I think he has like a, like a good build as well. He's like kind of in the between of like, not being like this, like regular looking guy, but he's not like a, like the rock Henry Cavill kind of like, super jacked guy that is like not believable um yeah like he's kind of like he... in that in between build um and he just really has the charm like i'm just like i i want to listen to this guy <laughs> like, i like I him he, over, he, I don't, he doesn't give me like leading band in the blockbuster vibes though you know what i mean interesting i don't i feel like i feel like the audience is there for that though because bridgerton is a big show obviously that's different than movies mm -hmm. but like but I feel like the audience would be there for. Is he the main character in Bridgerton? Um, I don't know if he's the main character. I, but he's got to be a big role, I think. Um, okay, it looks like he's like yeah, no, I mean he's probably like the the fourth or fifth lead in Bridgerton, but um, <laughs> right, I don't know. But like, <laughs> I I, but he's like appealing in a way that like the public knows who he is, regardless of like where he falls in like you know what I mean? Like he's like people yeah. like him. And, and people like he gets talked about regardless of like how significant his roles are. I think he deserves to be a leading man. Maybe the jump doesn't have to be to a James Bond movie, but like, I don't know that uh, it's a good opportunity. And like, you know, the conversation for a while was like, we don't want to see somebody like who's a major star already put into the role. Like we want to see somebody who kind of becomes the role. Um, and like, maybe he's the guy for that. How about <laughs> this? I'll throw out another pitch for James Bond. Um, Vanessa Kirby rocks. I, I, right? I'd be fine with that. No, I saw, I saw Rebecca Ferguson online and I was like, um, that's interesting. Uh, like, I think, I think she said something about, there's like an interview where like, she said, like, she's like, you can make me the ne next James Bond. And Simon Pegg was next to her. And he was like, you can make me Q. And, and then I, like, I saw like a TikTok edit of it. And I was like, Man, I would watch the yeah. shit out of that. Like, a, like a Rebecca Ferguson as James Bond, and someone was like, "You should just call her James Bond too, and like not have like not say anything about the name. Like her name yeah. is just James Bond, and like nobody in the movie questions it." And I'm like, "That I fucking like, rocks." I like <laughs> both. The, I like Rebecca Ferguson and Vanessa Kirby a lot more for James Bond than Emily Blunt. Um, yeah. Emily Blunt's good too, though. No, but that's I kind really of the fucking liked out. in the in the actual movie that like people just would have too much outrage about hmm. is. Just if they fucking like did what they 
originally were hinting at and made Lashana Lynch James Bond. I was like, she fucking rocks. Oh yeah. I Um, I think she's so, I think she's so good in that movie. I mean, I think she's good in everything. I really like her in general. I wish she could like land some bigger roles because I think, I I really think she's fucking talented and I, and I really think she's likable um, in a way that apparently the general public does not like because people, one, people don't want to see a, a woman be James Bond. Uh, and then those same people definitely do not want to see a black woman be James Bond. Um, she's fucking awesome, though. Like, I like I would be so fine with her being the next James Bond. Um, that I mean, there's no world in which it happens. But, yeah, I mean, there's uh, no because, world. Because of, the, because of the reaction to, like, her just not even being called James Bond, but just being called, like, 007 in, the, in, in those last movies. Like... Yeah, yeah well also in, in those that. movies though she was like she was playing an unlikable character you know it's also like sure like um, she's like kind of like the like you know yeah um she's like his replacement and he, you're not supposed to like side with her but i i yeah. literally she showed up in that in no time to die and and i was siding with her immediately i was like i fucking <laughs> love lashana lynch dude i don't care like put her in anything i i think yeah. she's so awesome um but whatever people that that'll never happen it would be cool if they if they had the guts to do it but um i don't know we'll we'll see who they end up getting ultimately i guess uh next piece of news speaking of an iconic character this is like very much kevin news uh killian murphy to return as tommy shelby in stephen knight's peaky blinders film filming is set to begin this september uh this is like the best news we could have possibly gotten for Peaky Blinders fans, because for me, I kn- I think we talked about it on the podcast previously um, when the Peaky Blinders movie was confirmed. Uh, and what I said on the podcast and what I have said on any form of social media is that there is like no world in which I want to watch this movie if Killian Murphy is not a part of it. Um, like that just seems boring to me. And I would have no interest if like his character is not coming back. And I and I express some concern because we're living in a post Oppenheimer world and Killian Murphy has a lot of options. He really doesn't have to come back uh, despite the fact it's like the role that made his career really. Um, he doesn't have to come back, uh, but he is, which was fucking awesome. Um, like infinitely a better movie than whatever it would have been if they tried to tell a story without his character. Sure. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. I yeah, it's just you and it's you and uh, Margot Robbie. Really excited for this one. Just you guys. <laughs> no other Peaky Blinders fans in the world. No, nope. definitely has not been one of the biggest shows on streaming for the past decade. Just that, you that and Margot Robbie never happened. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm a little bit reserved in the sense that, like, I hope it is a movie and not a TV show that, like, like a TV show episode that is yeah. movie length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I hope it's like a proper movie. Um, but I'm just like excited regardless because more Peaky Blinders. Um, like what's there not to be excited about? Um, maybe they'll get Tom Hardy in the movie. Maybe they, you know, like things will things will happen. What are um, the odds of Anya Taylor Joy making an appearance, or is, is her character dead in the show? No, no, no. She's she's around. Uh, I don't think she'd be in it. Um, she's got she's got more important things going on <laughs> right now. Um, but you never know. I mean, maybe listen. Uh, it, I don't know, like what the appetite for because like is the movie even going to get a theatrical release? Like it's like you is it would it just be like a straight streaming thing where it's like. But then it's like, what's the point of making a movie and not just another season? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't like, know. I assume I assume the point of making a movie is so that they could actually like put it in theaters. And I know that Peaky Blinders has a has a sneaky big fan base. Like, I know there there are a lot of fans of Peaky Blinders who like are a vocal minority because like a lot of people don't express how much they love the show, but like secretly you meet people and then they're like, oh, by the way, Peaky Blinders is my favorite show. Um, so maybe the movie would do good. I don't know. Um, next piece of news. Joker fully a do Joker two reportedly leans musical. Yeah. Leans heavily towards being a jukebox musical and will include at least 15 covers of very well-known songs. Is this uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down for you? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't really care either. Um, (laughs) I, it it made, it made me laugh a little bit when I heard about it. I was like, yeah, that's, um, what are we talking about? Yeah. (laughs) That's uh, sure. Sure. Um, I don't know. I like my excitement for the movie kind of like continues to, to dwindle. And like, really the only thing I care about is Lady Gaga. (laughs) 
I'm like, yeah, I really hope that she's great in it. And uh, otherwise, uh, it could be whatever. Um, I mean, like, I love Walking Phoenix, but like, this is like, you know, I said it before, it's like one of my least favorite roles of his. Like, I really don't care for his Joker that much, despite the fact it got him his Oscar. Um, yeah, he stole the fucking Oscar from Adam Driver, dude. For yeah, his, Adam Driver's like, best work. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't, whatever. Like, yeah, it's fine. I don't know. Hopefully the movie's good. I uh, I don't have much faith that it will be, and this piece of news does not give me any more. <laughs> but, yeah. But that's okay. Um, Jeffrey Wright joins Denzel Washington and Spike Lee's High and Low for A24. That's uh, cool. That's it cool. is fucking cool and and it's and it's especially cool in the sense that like you know kind of what for us as people who appreciate the actors uh like which is when somebody has an award season run and then they get cast and stuff after um <laughs> Like they, you know, um, like we saw Jeffrey Wright, Oscar nominee for best actor just a few weeks ago. Um, and now he gets to be in a Spike Lee movie opposite Denzel Washington, um, which like maybe he would have gotten that role before because it's like we don't know how significant the role is. But if it's like a real like co-lead thing, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, I, I think he'll be awesome in her regardless. Like that fucking rocks. Um, and yeah. I love Jeffrey Wright and I love Spike Lee. And uh, hopefully the more news that comes out about this movie, the more. I could be excited for it and not skeptical. Um, I'm not going to be the fucking guy to be skeptical anyway. I'm not going to be the guy to be like, oh, Spike Lee's remaking this movie. Like, I'm, you know, we talked about this on the podcast when oh, this boy. piece of news. Yeah, we talked about this on the podcast <laughs> when this piece of news originated. But like, yeah, I, like I'm, I'm going to be an optimist until I see the thing. Like, I'm like, Spike Lee movie, now Denzel Washington and Jeffrey Wright in it. You got no reason to uh, doubt it for me. Um, yeah, I'm just happy Spike Lee's doing another movie. Yeah, um, a live action Popeye movie is in the works. Did you see this piece of news? Yeah, I saw this because Owen fucking tweeted. Yeah, wait, I want to make this like, OK, <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> Which is like, I literally put this in here. And then like, as I was putting this piece of news in here, I was like, oh, Owen's not going to be on this episode. So I don't really know if we need to talk about this. But yeah, that's the um, only reason I saw this is, is because Owen tweeted, wait, I want to make this movie. And it like, yeah. but he was he tweeted it in a way that was like him, like being like, wait, they should actually make me let me make this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right. Dude. Um, what does a live action Popeye movie even look like? I mean, that'll it's going to be something uh, dumb. It's going to be something. Yeah. fucking dumb. Well, it'll be like a kid's movie. No, probably I, not. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, we don't know any other details other than that. It's a movie that is happening. Um, no. Do you have, <laughs> you have a dream Popeye casting? <laughs> Fucking, wait, what's his George, name? What's the guy? George Carmi. What's, um, what's the guy who plays Shazam? <laughs> oh, Zachary Levi. <laughs> Yeah, Zachary Levi. What's, that fucking, what's the name of that movie he has coming out? It's like something oh, in the blue crayon. The Magic Crayon. Or, yeah. yeah, it's what it's like fuck? based off a kid's book. Yeah. Where in the kid's book, looks... the character he's playing is the baby. <laughs> yeah, that shit looks awful. Like, maybe he's the most, maybe he's the most logical casting for a live action Popeye. Bro, um, I can't wait for that movie to come out and him to go on fucking Instagram live and have a fucking panic attack. <laughs> Uh, the the crayon movie yeah the crayon movie yeah, did you say crayon that'll... yeah that's how you say it around these parts crayon all right yeah, whatever crayon. Man. you crayon. said crayon didn't you that was fucking weird crayon. who the fuck says crayon well i know i don't know like crayon, what crayon fucking... i don't know it's the crayon color weird, dude um crayon? The, the podcast comments will definitely have something to say about nobody nobody's the... listening to this part of the podcast no Everybody's people love this part about. of the podcast um, <laughs> the great crayon debate this the is great like, crayon this is important, crayon. This is important stuff crayon. um okay last piece of news crayon. uh is a tv crayon. piece of news uh crayon. rachel rachel senate crayon. to write executive produce and star in an untitled comedy pilot for hbo which is about a codependent friend group who reunites uh, navigating how the time, time apart ambition and new relationships have changed them. Um, a Rachel Senate led written and produced HBO show seems like something that was like bound to happen almost. Can I speak uh, my truth? Sure. That you don't think she's funny and that you hate women. 
I don't want to speak my truth anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what I fucking thought. That's what I fucking thought. Thinking. No, I loved Rachel Sennett for a, for a moment in time. And then, and then, then she got annoying because she showed <laughs> she showed how much of her personality she has. And she showed that she doesn't care about losers who hate on women. And, <laughs> yeah. and now you want to be on their side. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. No, I know. I know a number of people who do I that. I think that bottoms just really soured um, yeah. my excitement well, uh, for anything about her. The thing is, is like, I, as much as I am a person who enjoys bottoms much more than you, I do think she is like significantly overshadowed in that movie by Iowa Debry, who is like clearly the highlight of the movie because of how good she is in everything, um, including that movie. Uh, I still think Rachel Sennett's is funny. I still I, i'm i'm curious what a show written by her will look like though it'll look like bottoms it'll yeah. just be like because she wrote bottoms sure but like i i don't know i don't know uh but also this is kind of like you're you're taking that stance but then this is kind of like perfect for you because your main complaint about bottoms was that it looked too much like a TV show? Shut the fuck like up. it wasn't Shut shot the fuck well. Up. Shut the so it's fuck like if you just took up. bottoms and made it a TV show, and the then it's perfect. No, but so, okay. right? Am I wrong? Shut like, it's like, yes, if, if you don't wrong. have to worry Shut about up. it looking Shut good, up. then um, or did you my, hate um, everything else? Did you hate women being funny as well in bottoms, <laughs> or or did you only hate the part where it looked bad? Oh no, because bottom. I have like actual real criticism of bottoms that you are making out to be like i'm just a no, misogynist I'm obviously fuck, no i'm um, obviously fucking around i hope that the but, listener knows that uh <laughs> no so, i think the listener knows that considering we did an episode on bottom <laughs> but I, um I'm trying to think oh yeah so we uh me and you kevin have been kind of like searching for uh the chance to do an episode of our podcast about a tv show oh right right, right. <laughs> and every and you time want this to be the show it, well it probably will be because owen could probably be involved with it too i'm not joking every time we have done this a combination of you and me have just not finished the show yeah <laughs> man it we, is listen uh like, i actually well, had this funny enough i just had this conversation with george uh the other night which we were chatting about tv and he was like he was like what was your beef with the boys and i was like i it's mean that's a good. separate that's a separate no yeah. that's a separate <laughs> thing but like but then i was like my problem now is that i don't like good tv i don't want to watch good tv and like i don't mean that some of the tv i watch isn't good but i don't want to watch like prestige dramatic tv i want to watch like trash and or trash adjacent tv stuff that like isn't exactly trash like is well made but like is but fits more into into that category like you know i said to him i was like sex lives of college girls one of the three best shows i've ever seen in my life love it love i'll i'll say it here on the podcast i've said it before like i fucking love that show it's not like good to be, you know what i mean like it's like you're never going to compare it to the sopranos i don't fucking want to watch that shit though i want to watch the sex lives of college girls because because that's like that's like the kind of TV that I like, like a show that is similar to bottoms. That's the fucking kind of TV I like, you know, like that's that's the fun stuff. You know, like we almost you mentioned us doing a TV episode and and we were like kind of talking about Shogun. I haven't finished the first episode yet, man. You know, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure the show is great. I hear people are loving it. I hear people yeah, are having a great good. time. dude. It's good. I'll um, tell you, I'm watching Shogun. It's yeah. fine. It's I good. hear people are like, enjoying it. I'm like, listen, man, maybe this just ain't for me. You know what I will say, though? This isn't I didn't include this in the news. But while we're on the subject of TV, um, they released the first trailers for season two, of House of the Dragon. That's some prestige TV that I'll watch. That's, I'm not going to watch right that. Now. No, I'm not telling you to watch it. I'm saying I'm saying I just want to include it. I just want to. Yeah, yeah. That. No, because uh, I'm just thinking like I'll tell the listener right now. Here are the shows that we that me and Kevin were talking and we were like, oh, let's do an episode. Let's do a looks like a TV episode yeah. about this show. The curse, the Nathan Fielder show. Yeah. Neither finished. of us finished it. Did you even yeah. start it? Uh, I started the first episode. I got interrupted halfway through and I never went back and finished it. <laughs> Okay, I yeah, I I watched the first episode, which is the same thing then... that happened with Shogun. I got interrupted halfway through the first episode of Shogun, and then I never went back and finished the rest. Yeah, I watched the first episode of The Curse. I was like, "Oh, this is good," and then I just didn't watch another episode. Um, yeah, right. Head. 
This was real. We were actually no, Ted we were is like, actually Ted actually fits into the category of shows that I would watch. I just hate that it was like put on Peacock or whatever. Put yeah. it on a fucking streaming service that I use. And uh, the 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 thing about Ted too was that it was Owen's idea to do an episode about yeah, Ted. That's true. Um, that's the true. three of us, none of us finished it. Me and Owen no, watched I, I never two episodes together. Me and Owen watched two episodes together, and then we never watched Bro, another episode. You put, you put Ted, you put Ted on Hulu tomorrow. I'm finishing it tomorrow. That's all I'm saying. I don't know why the fuck it's on Peacock. I'm never getting that shit. Sorry, <laughs> never, no, no chance. I'm going near Peacock. Um, I will, I will say this would never happen. But maybe this would be a solo podcast for for the listeners who are really interested, who really, who really are are dedicated to the life of one K Meeks a love island uk season 11 pod now we're fucking talking now we're fucking talking maybe a little a little looks like reality tv now we're cooking with gas not like that. now now we're talking about something that i could sit through um i don't know man well I, I i even thought about doing true detective night country when that was coming and then i didn't finish that shit speaking of fucking ai being used and stuff true detective night country Listen, man, saw that episode with the AI posters. Fun fact, never watched another episode after. So I don't yeah. know, something, something to keep in mind about True Detective Night Country. Um, so yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't the, know. For, for, the, for the podcast listeners, uh, we, we reach out to you guys. Um, we probably won't listen to your suggestions as it's becoming very apparent if you're listening that it's very hard for us to orchestrate a looks like a TV episode. But well, if there is an like, upcoming show that you like really think you would like us covering we will we will take it into consideration and and see if somehow we can make that happen i don't yeah, know what that show will here's be. a little bit of background um, right for so kevin really likes reality tv i really like taylor sheridan shows and owen doesn't like any tv and will not watch whatever yeah. you recommend <laughs> yeah i mean you know there's like i said big summer for tv but in terms of us covering any of it you know like there's there's a whole month this summer where the boys house of the dragon and the bear all come out and, and, and another show i'm forgetting the fourth show <laughs> yeah no i know but i'm saying for in terms of like the world of television a ridiculous month for tv and then as you just heard doug say does not sound appealing at all to 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 <laughs> uh, the likes of this podcast you know but like in the tv world probably one of the best months for for a tv consumer like ever like that's like you're getting you're getting some of the biggest shows in the world all coming out in the same month don't care if he wants to watch the bear but like i'm not gonna get caught up on that show you know <laughs> just like i'll be honest doug the bear feels to me so much like a show that you would not enjoy okay um okay <laughs> like, it, like it really does i mean uh and and i'm even maybe i'm being a little bit critical because i don't love the bear as much as the average person i love it enough to watch it which is saying a lot for television as you can tell as you the listener can tell i you know it's it's hard for me to get hooked on tv i'll at least watch the bear i will be watching the new season this summer and i'm at least mildly excited for it but it's just like no i mean compare to compare that to house of the dragon which comes out the same month nowhere near the same level of excitement i mean house of the dragon's up here and the bears down here like they're they're not even in the same playing field um so i don't know one day we will orchestrate a looks like a tv episode if you have suggestions feel free to include them. Yeah, the Sprinter Senate show will actually happen. <laughs> probably um, will be the one. I'll say this. Maybe. I would commit. Uh, here's the thing. If they do another season of Euphoria and they bring oh, back. That, I mean, that's that's an that's an event for the history books, yeah, actually. No, if they do another season of Euphoria and they bring we back the it, entire we, principal we, cast. We cover it. We, yeah, I'll watch. I haven't even I, seen the first I'm actually I'll, I'll get yeah. caught up. Just I'll cover. lock it in. I'll lock it in right now for the listener. If, if season three of Euphoria comes out and they ha and they bring back at least half of the stars, yeah, um, we're talking about Euphoria. <laughs> like yeah, we will do even it. if it's even if the um, only people back are like Zendaya and Hunter Schaefer, I think that's enough. Like, sure. let alone yeah. if like if, Sydney Sweeney if bring, and Jacob. If Elordi, they bring like, them all back, if they bring back those four people. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck they pull it off because I they're gonna get like the fucking what's his name Eric Dane or whatever like yeah they're gonna get, they're gonna get those people back and if they, they could get like Alexa those, Demi and yeah 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 if they bring back those four people if somehow which like apparently that's the case because they said they're filming it in the next two months it's probably like contracts and stuff I guess yeah but like so like it, so 
it seems like it's getting made. Like it, like it seems like it's actually going to happen. I, I'm literally not yeah. going to believe it until I see like the promotional material and I see a trailer of like those four people in season three of Euphoria. Then I'm going to be like, holy shit, they did it. Yeah, um, we will. We will, we'll we will co- cover like, that one hundred. We'll cover like, it so like a, hard. Honestly, we might do like because like the way that we have always pitched it looks like a tv thing is like we'll do like a whole season we'll just like do a whole episode about the whole season at the end of the season right for yeah. for like euphoria if they get all those people back we might have to do like episode by like weekly coverage episode by episode every week <laughs> and, I, and i'd be down I'd yeah because i i love me some euphoria i mean we we're talking about possibly the worst season of television ever made. Yeah, we're talking about like, like, some of like, the most like talented landmark, actors yeah, ever. Like, this is like a landmark thing. Like it's like you are putting the the <laughs> rising stars of the moment and pairing them with the worst working writer in not like, just the, Hollywood, the worst but all of the world right yeah. now. Well, um, it's like it's like him and Emerald Fennel are like battling it out for the worst on tour. <laughs> and and Doug famously ten minutes ago said he doesn't hate women. Just something to keep in mind. Just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Um, conversation wasn't even about Saltburn, but Doug, but Doug (laughs) fucking pulled it in. Um, I'm kidding. Um, she's not a good writer. Anyway, we will cover Euphoria and we will maybe cover another show that is suggested, uh, (laughs) but we'll have to see. Uh, that's our last piece of news. We can wrap up there. You can join us next week for episode 60. We're going to be talking about something. But we actually say, what are we that, talking about? Next yeah, week? we actually don't know what that thing is yet. <laughs> so it is a surprise for both the listener and us. Um, but we'll see you later. <laughs>